Broadcasting from the heart of downtown Hollywood, this is SoFloRadio.com. All right, welcome to the show. Rick's show on the radio, December 18th, Florida style. We got a really great show today. I have Cutback, yeah, a surf band. Woohoo! Yeah, so this is the way we celebrate the holidays down here in Florida with some cool, cool uh, surf music. And uh, we'll get back and talk to the guys. And I also want to tell you, my lovely Irish Colleen Caroline is here with me. I want to introduce her to the world, my future wife, by the way. So let's listen to a little holiday music and we'll get back. Yeah. All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, I've been really looking forward to having you guys cut back on my show here for a while. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it kind of got out of my mind until a mutual friend of ours gave me a little Facebook uh, text, uh, Kate. Kate Graveskill, right? Is that her last yep, name? Gaskill. Gaskill, right. And uh, she said, uh, hey, don't forget about these guys. And I go, oh, yeah, I got an opening like uh, in the next month or so. So texted you guys right away and uh frank uh, you got back with me and uh, here we are finally for this show this is going to be a good one but thanks for having us on you this bet is, man yeah, yeah, we're kind of cool. excited yeah. to be in hollywood you know that's, uh, that's yeah good hollywood's awesome. <laughs> you know? let me introduce you guys here um formally but first i want to say myself my i am rick santis and this is my show rick's show on the radio and uh, my producer friend here george rodriguez yo, yo. everybody knows george uh from uh, way back when, uh, the, the Neil Rogers show, uh, he's grateful, uh, graceful enough to let me have a show on the radio here, which has uh, been going pretty well. And, <clears throat> and my lovely Irish Colleen here, <laughs> Caroline. Say hello to everybody, Caroline. Felt your eyes. Oh, yeah, that was... <laughs> what, what did Australia. that mean? Sure, show us up. Uh, <laughs> Let's welcome in Irish. Do you want to say hello to your mom? Uh, your mom watching in Ireland, isn't she? Hi, mommy. <laughs> All right. So, cut back. Uh, we have standing here uh, Frank Ferraro. He's a guitar player. Say hello to your mom, too. Okay. Hey, mom. Okay. She's Rich Lich- Lavoie. Right? Lavoie. Lavoie. I thought so. <laughs> hey, mom. All right. <laughs> and Nick Ravine. How y'all doing? You don't have a mom? She died uh, oh, I'm sorry. two years ago. All right. She well, had she a great mom. life. Made it all the way to, what was it? 97. 97, yeah. So, I got some good genes in me. That's great. Well, I'm sure she's watching up there. All right, you guys, welcome to the show, man. Looking forward to listening to you guys. And there's one of your members is not here because he got the Christmas flu. Just just last night, yeah, our our drummer, our drummer, and uh, disappointed that he can't be here. So we should say hi to Elliot as well. Hi, Elliot. Wish you were here. Miss you. He's an he's an awesome drummer, just a good guy all around. And he sounded awful when he called this morning. He was just that's too bad. He sounded like a DJ though. Oh yeah, (laughs) he had that. Had a good radio voice. That happens sometimes. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So uh, I don't know. You guys can see on the internet these guys. Have some really neat looking guitars, man. Uh, Rich, your guitar—it's uh, beautiful. It's uh, an acoustic, uh, but it's uh, an acoustic uh, an ovation, but it's—it uh, looks like a surfboard. Yeah, it's actually called the—it's uh, actually called the ovation. And <laughs> Here, lift M-O- it up so we can give it up to the it's camera. Right. Give it up. There we go. Yeah. Can you see it? Higher. It's actually yeah. called. There you are. There it is. There we go. That's beautiful. That is—it's actually the. Oh, the oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the ovation MOB 52 and the MOB stands for my other board. Oh, awesome. So, and that's why I got it. To, you do acoustic within the surf band. Right. Part of it is on the CD, but there was also a Taylor 12 string and a Martin D35. Mm-hmm. And some old beat up 
that the producer brought in, a Django Master kind of guitar from the 40s that oh. was on there as well that sounds really Because it cool. sounded so, really awesome. Yeah, because it, it fit the tune at the time. Yeah. So, anyhow. So, you guys in Cutback, you guys have been in this area. You're all local guys. That's right. All right? Local. You've been living down here for like... Forever? Ever. Since little kids. Yeah. Since little kids. Little kids. Uh, and you played in different bands, right? Mostly uh, played in our own bands. We, oh, we yeah. Been playing yeah to, we were pretty in, much our own thing. We were in Frank's Garage. That was our first band. And I was a trombone player. And they said, okay, it's in the bass clef. We pitched okay. in $35, went to Ace Music, bought a bass. And Richard said, just follow my finger. Just follow my finger. Ah, that's pretty smart. So now, took I, it I, off from there. I played the bass myself, and the reason I played the bass is because everybody in high school was playing a guitar. That's right. You know, and somebody had to play the bass, and I was just the lead thing. I just wasn't getting it, so, all right, I'll be the bass player. But actually, I really got into it. I like the bass. I love the bass. That's a smart move, because you show up at a party, and it's it's Guitar Mageddon with, you know, 50 guitarists in the room, but yeah. there's one bass yeah, player. Raise so. your hand if you play bass. That's yeah. the first time I've been in with two bass players yeah. in yeah. a long time. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, you're a bass player, and you, you just get passed around like a... They Never mind. <laughs> they, no, they, no, they love us. They love us. They do love us, yeah. don't they? We make the songs. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so you guys are seasoned professionals, uh, oh, yeah. I must say, and uh, you've been playing in the area for... Uh, name some of the old bars that maybe we might have seen you guys play. The pig pen. <laughs> the play it's pen. called the play, the play pen. pen. Play pen. Yeah. Talking Arts before, pen. remember the flying machine. The flying machine. Yeah, that was. I remember uh, that one. We yeah. did a lot of spring break gigs on the beach and the trailers down on Lauderdale Beach. Back when spring break was, was spring break. Yeah, yeah, the real yeah. spring break. Yeah, wet t-shirt contests, broken beer bottles. I remember that. Yep. yep. Free food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Banana eating contest. Scrounging beer. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Sleeping on the beach. Done yeah. a lot of a lot of high school homecomings for the local high schools and yeah. things like that. Did you play at the candy store? Remember the candy store? Of course. Oh man, that's great. <laughs> so um tell me, uh, Fred Rich, when okay. you guys started um, this band, this particular genre of music, uh, the surf music, uh, whose idea was that in uh, what made you interested in this truly fun music? I mean, it is a blast, really. <laughs> Probably the uh, Tornadoes tune called Telstar, back in the 60s. Is that like a really famous one? Is that the one that goes... Oh, it's a fa- <laughs> it starts with a keyboard, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> famous tune, but I mean, it was... Oh, I know that one, yeah. You know, South Florida, Rockets, Cape Kennedy, the whole thing. Uh-huh. And um, it just was like, God, it all worked. Mm-hmm. I mean, the beach, surf... We all went up to Coco. Oh, to yeah. Waves. All right. So, so, so you... you. <laughs> the Telstar Regional. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and you decided, then you guys... you. Uh, well, one of the things in Rich's line of work, too, he comes, up, he comes across some really what we consider sort of obscure bands from around the world, and, and, and they borderline... The, the surf music. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they're traditional surf bands, but they're more fourth generation surf bands. So we were getting a little bit tired of playing, you know, Whipping Post and, yeah. you know, Smoke on the Water Leonard Skinner, and all the uh, and Free Bird. Yeah, Free Bird. Everything. So okay. Richard came with a collection of songs that were, in addition to the, to the traditional songs, were sort of new fourth generation, fourth wave surf music. And we learned it and we really liked it. We tested it out at a couple of private functions and it went over really well. And mm-hmm. we, so we took it to the next level after that. Great. So, yeah. And it really was to st- it really was to stand out from the massive bands that are just playing blues and yeah. uh, rock. Well, so we and, also had two excellent lead players, so we had to use them. Yeah, yeah, that's a good thing. I mean, you guys are like jazz guys, you know. I mean, there's some really big, cool chords that you guys could play in that. But the surf music is... And it's just fun. There's no other way to put it. Uh, Caroline and I were driving in, and we were listening, and I was thinking, you know, we're, I'm planning on taking her down to the Keys, and I'm going, this is great driving music, you know? Yeah, that's right. Or out in your powerboat. Yeah. Or, uh, happy music. That's what I love about it. It's really right. uplifting and happy. Talking here, honey. It's real happy and uplifting music. Yeah. It's, it's really lovely. It, it really is. is. 
Yeah, so... Uh, you'll relate. I mean, being in a, in a lot of variety of bands, when I first heard the music, you know, when Richard, you know, made some mixed, you know, CDs for us to listen to, I went, piece of cake, this is going to be simple to learn. It wasn't. It was actually a little bit more challenging as a musician to pick up the, the variation in chords, the progressions, and the and the note exchanges that were involved. Right, and so another it wasn't thing... it was that simple. Another thing about it that I noticed is that surf music is... Uh, very particular as to what instruments, um, maybe instruments or sounds uh, that, that if you want to be really genuine. I mean, I've seen you play, Rich, and uh, don't you have like a Fender Jaguar? 62 Jag. Yeah. 62 Jag, and it's uh, uh, that blue uh, aquamarine. Or... Surf green. Yeah, see, that's <laughs> that that's the surf band guitar, isn't it? No, and, we, and Frank and I both have the vintage Fender Twin amplifiers. Yes. And uh, Nikki's got the, uh, I mean, it is the standard P bass. Yeah. It's, it's, it's perfect. It is what it is. It really is. And I'll tell you, anybody get a chance to listen to Cutback Live, uh, it's just a delightful thing, and it's very, it's done with true, genuine, and, and heart as well, because you guys, it's obvious that you really love this music as well. Well, we love the whole the whole vibe of the surf thing. I just want to bring it out and share it with everybody and mm -hmm. kind of show you it's not a sport. It's a love. It is. It's yeah, a lifestyle. It's, Each, like a, it's like a religion. It almost. it almost chooses you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I, I, I assume you guys are surfers. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. What's Except the best place I had to, to sit surf? out the last swell. It was like triple overhead in Delray Beach. I'm 62. Oh. Uh -huh. You know, I like to say the ocean always wins in the end. Oh, no, it was great. It was great, too. Yeah, so. You had to be down here. It was no, down, down here was nice. No, I know it was. I'm yeah. just saying it wasn't triple overhead, though. It was no, double no. overhead. Delray hey, was triple. Make sure you talk. I got the pictures to show it. Yeah. Check it out on the internet. I saw it. That's great. Um, so uh, you have a new CD that you guys just put together. How long in the, in the making is this particular one? And it, <laughs> the name of this is? Um, the Surfer's Journey. Define how journey. long. Let's see, that took about it, four years. Four years, a surfer's journey to do that? I but, mean, but like only a, six months in the studio. Well, it, but about like four a, years between writing between writing, and some other failed studio attempts. Awesome. I mean, there's like how many songs on there? Like 100 songs or something like that? <laughs> At least. There's 17, <laughs> 17. tracks. 17. 15, 15, 15 yeah. songs, an intro and an outro. That's beautiful. 50 oh, minutes. We're, we're listening to a little bit right now, aren't we? What are we... All throughout the show, we're going to be listening to this here. Tell you what, let's listen to it. Let's let's sit back and just listen to a little bit of cutback. What do you say? Uh, I was noticing a couple of uh, pictures that we were putting up there. Oh, but I couldn't see it. You've got the... Yeah, we're looking at the uh, the cutback. Uh, you were mentioning um, that uh, you had designed the... Uh, Nikki, you designed the cover photo? Yeah, I actually did the painting for it's that. Painting. Oh, it's a painting, both huh? The, both the cover and the interior are paintings Nikki did. It's from my Tiki Art series, which kind of takes the primitive of the, uh, the Hawaiian culture and the people of Oceanus. They travel around exploring, and essentially that's what you do as a surfer. You live to explore. Mm -hmm. That's what's cool about it, going to new places, and that's kind of what we're trying to reflect in our songs. Yeah, and have you guys done that, uh, like traveled around any other places to do the surfing thing? Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. did All Costa Rica. Really? Yeah. Oh, let me hear some. Like, where have you been? Costa Rica, Hawaii, Co is Rock, Hawaii, Mexico, yeah. uh, all over the islands. Up and down the East Coast. Yeah, and, the whole uh, East Coast. Uh, awesome. Too many times. Of course, to California. Well, you guys are the real deal, man. I got the real deal here in the studio. Mm. This is cool. <laughs> France. The real soul surfer deal. Yeah. 
So where are the best places to surf in Florida, by the way? It's, Florida's not really a surf well, road. What it is is if you, if you look on a map, the uh, Bahama Islands block out any deep ocean swell. Uh -huh. so that's why if you're in Florida, where we grew up, you learn to travel to go surfing. That's mm -hmm. why Shark Pit is on there, Monster Hole. You know, I heard of Monster Hole. Yeah, that's the south side of Sebastian Inlet. But yeah. Basically, once you get above the Bahamas, things start working pretty good. You know, I noticed that the surfing guys are fanatic about surfing. I, I was in a band called Dreamer, and it was a, a buddy, the guitar player, uh, was a surfer. And, you know, we'd get done at like 4 o'clock in the morning, and it's November, and it's cold. And it's, you know, he's listening to the radio, and, you know, it's like checking for swells. You know, and, and we're like dead tired, ready to go to sleep. He's putting his wetsuit on, driving up the, to the monster hole up there. Yeah, Fort <laughs> Pierce was your kind of your kickoff point if you yeah. wanted to get up there. Oh, man, that's crazy. Man, I well, think your backyard's the best place. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a house uh, just south of Patrick's Air Force Base. I've got my own little beach there with 35 parking spaces. Wow. I just, that's, yeah, it's, it's cool. It doesn't get any better than that. Oh, it's amazing. great, right? Out with all your buddies. You, you, know, you definitely got to let that guy yeah. in the band, yeah. huh? <laughs> and, and up yeah, there, yeah. yeah, yeah, up there is a particular style of break, which is when it's just a long swell rolling in anywhere from say waist to chest high, maybe tickling your eyeballs. It's called longboard heaven. Mm. You just get on that wave and you just cruise forever. It gives you goosebumps. But Rick, not to leave the music subject, but Florida has produced more world class surfers than any other one place in the world. Get out! So, I didn't know that. Kelly yeah. Slater, eleven time world champion from Cocoa Beach. Really, the Hobgoods. Who else, Nick? One cool. of the first guys to uh, place in the Pipeline Masters, Jeff Crawford. It's because we don't have those perfect waves. We're, we're juggling breaks, so we learn to read the water really well. Uh, so the guys that like are surfing those gigantic waves that we see on TV, are those, uh, that's like an anomaly. That's not what you're really... I mean, I mean that's... That's a specialty which, almost you in itself. You those, are have big, the, those are big yeah. wave surfers who've go trained all those. their, you have to have near death, all their lives. You have to have a desire for near-death experiences mm -hmm. and really enjoy them. Yeah. In, Ar in Ireland, on the coast, in around the uh -huh. coast of Ireland, they're huge. They're absolutely monstrous, mm -hmm. the waves on the coast really of Ireland. And yeah, cold. and really yeah. chilly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, it's cold here. Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, uh, I think, uh, Frank, you were telling us that they have um, a surf, a couple of surf events in Ireland. They have two surf, surf music festivals in Ireland. Uh, one at the end of uh, July. I'm sorry. One that's at the end of June. It's called It's called Sea Sessions, and it's in. You'll have to correct me. Bundoran Island. Bundoran. Bundoran. Bundoran Island. Yes. And then at the end of May, uh, they have the Wave Masters. Uh, it's a surf and music festival in Milltown. Milltown. That's right. That's mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. So yeah, and they're and they're really big events. And there's a ton of of surf bands not only throughout Europe, probably more than in the U.S., but in the U.K. as well. Hmm. Cool. Well, I see you guys got your guitars here, and um, uh, did you? Uh, have a, I know you have a couple of songs that you'd like to play for us here. I think it'd be great if we could hear some of those, huh? Sure. Okay, cool. What do you say, George? Let's um, let's listen to a little bit of Cutback live in the studio on Rick's show on the radio. All right. This right. is Atlantico. <laughs> All right. Our homage to the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, well, everybody brags about the Pacific. We thought we grew up in the Atlantic. It needs a song, too. Oh. Cool. <laughs> All right.
Hanawa. 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 <laughs> All right. What would that mean? Brilliant. That means excellent. All oh. right. In Gaelic, by the way. The lady has good Would taste. Be <laughs> yeah, you check it. You can, be up there. She says, we can googly that. <laughs> she says googly. Isn't she cute? She's cute. <laughs> Adorable. Ah, uh, thank you. Ah, uh, what a treat to have you guys here, man. That's really beautiful. good That's seasoned stunning. professionals here. And I got to say, uh, when I first met you... It was at that party. Uh, yeah, for Gypsy's Kate, party. Right, Gypsy's party. And, you know, it's just one of those things. That I'm not really a dancer, but it's just, I couldn't help myself listening I'll to change you. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, all right. Yeah, but you just can't help it. If you got a party or something and you want, you want the party to just, you know, have this great vibe, hire these guys cut back. That's for sure, man. <laughs> They're, they're like one of the best. And different. By, yeah, definitely. It's different for, uh, you know, it's not like top 40 or anything like that. But if you want something that just lasts and keeps the vibe going, this is it right here. It's actually very smooth. It's, yeah. it's really nice. It's really smooth and Thank happy, you. as I say, and enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Now, you guys got a regular gig down here, right, uh, that you play at? We do. Um, no, we've been playing at the Maikai, the world famous Maikai. World famous. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's a good place. I mean, you know, very surfy, very uh, oh, man, it's, tropical. It's a perfect it's a vibe. Fun. It's just a fun night out. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a it's just a fun night out over there. Yeah. Great ambience, great atmosphere, great drinks. Yeah. Especially after yeah. 151 rum swizzle. It's a yeah, real Is that what it is? It the little thing in the uh, coconut thing, that, that rum thing that they do? Rum runner? Everything's a rum thing. Everything's yeah, a rum is, thing there. That's true. It's, it's, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that one. <laughs> I think you only need one of those to put you out. Yeah, not but after we play. Yeah, after you play. We do. We have a 151 rum swizzle at the end of the night. Smart. Or there'd be no yeah. end of the night. Yeah, the end of the night would be then, Yeah. right? <laughs> I'll know when I see him coming with one. <laughs> no. I won't be getting one. <laughs> so uh, when when do you play there? Uh, uh, like uh, The, the end? first Friday of every month. Okay. So our next, our next gig there is January 2nd. We play from 6 to 9 p.m. Awesome. So it's actually a great happy hour, come after work oh, type I'm, of thing. I'm still, in I'm still here. Right? All right, yeah. Caroline, uh, okay. Caroline and I will be there for oh, you'll, sure. You'll have to come and right. see yeah. it. Just, yeah. just to say you've been there. It really yeah. is a, it really is a world-famous tiki bar yeah. and restaurant. Yeah, it's really okay, nice there. Cool. Yeah, man. Okay, well, um, so uh, as far as like uh, the, uh, when I saw you guys again, I had wandered on the uh, Fort Lauderdale Centennial uh, the they American had, Beach Party. Right. That was oh, like yeah. a couple of years ago, right? Two years uh, ago, one year like, ago. No, more like four. Or four. Was well, it that long? Well, the Centennial was, I think the Centennial was the second year they were doing it. The year before that was the 50th anniversary of where the boys are. Mm -hmm. They think they've done it for five years, five or six, you're going on five or six years. Um, when was the Centennial? I don't know when, the, 2012 maybe was the Centennial. Okay. Yeah, well, I came upon there, and it was it was July, though, wasn't it? In May. July? Oh, it was yeah. May? End of May, yeah. Huh? Right. End of May. It was warm, though. It was yeah, warm. Memorial it was a beautiful day, day. I mean, it was not a cloud in the sky. I remember walking by there, and I had my little little handy cam, my first little handy cam, and, uh, and I, I, I go, wow, this is great. You guys are here. So I made a little video for it. And that had your old drummer in there, though, right? Yeah, that had Jeff West, our, mm -hmm. our previous drummer. Also, right. also an excellent, excellent musician. Right. Well, we look forward to seeing you at the Mai Kai for sure. Good, good. Yeah, so tell Fun us a little out. bit more about your um, the DVD, I mean the CD here, uh, 17 tunes. Uh, how do you guys go about writing songs? What, how, what kind of process? Somebody comes mm. in with one idea, is it like a collaboration? Uh, I can look at it. I, I typically come up with a foundation. I hand it over to Frank. Frank puts the icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. We all collaborate. Nicky is like one of the most prolific bass players I've ever met. He just comes in with the right part. Yeah. But you got to wait till the guitars find their parts yeah. where you can put the bass in and weave it around it. But it yeah, all yeah. just falls together. Yeah. You look upon it as, uh, with the drums, four voices singing together. Yeah, it's important to be uh, the, uh, there's, as far as bass players go, you know, there's the guys that like to be on top and be another guitar player. Yeah. Mm, you know, but, uh, you know, it's good to play the just the right the right part well in it a is. surf like band that works though oh yeah uh, well because everybody's kind of uh, you know it's a, it's a four piece adventure I mean everybody is putting in their part 
It's mm -hmm. tough to it's a tough thing to do when you don't have a vocal. The guitars usually can hide behind the lead singer. Right. Uh, I suppose you're right. Yeah. But we look at ourselves as four separate voices, and we have to harmonize together. We've got to come mm -hmm. in and out at the right spots, and we have to we have to blend as a group. It's really like four separate voices coming together. And yeah. Frank will write some songs, and uh, he'll bring them out to us. He he tends to do more of a recorded production to give us an idea of where he wants to go. Uh -huh. Then we run it through the same process, only backwards. But the the important thing is is when you're an instrumental band. You really have to be diverse and, and really do a lot of moods because you're yeah. just going to get boring. And I think that's something, well, not to diss any other surf bands, but you hear 15 cuts and it sounds like 15 tracks of the same thing. Right. And this way, it's, it's, you, you've got to stay diverse and kind of take you through the, the journey. Mm. And as a matter of fact, um, I've seen your show and um, I kind of like, you, you do like a little narration where you describe what the song is about and the song could be about like waiting for a wave or a certain thing and it's it's called it's like Nikki does what talks. what the Hawaiians call talking story I'll, I'll let Nikki okay. explain it but it's it's based on uh, on something that the Hawaiians do and it's called talking story mm -hmm. it's kind of really just sharing the love of what you feel when you're doing it and there's sometimes there's places you go to that pipeline and just you know phenomenal sometimes it's waiting for that wave mm -hmm. sometimes it's just surfing uh, has legends to it which has kind of fallen off but it started by guys just getting out of the world war ii and they wanted to explore they wanted to just get rid of everything and lead the beachcomber life and then that and that was really all about fun and all about adventure it wasn't about a golf score it wasn't right. about a tennis backhand uh -huh. it was about going with your buddies over to hawaii and camping out on the north shore mm. it was just a lot of incredible history that that's just all verbal out there it's you know there's a few books on the history of surfing or the legend of surfing but it's it's something we wanted to bring out in our show and and be rather a show than just a bunch of guys coming up and playing a bunch it, of songs. When Nick shares it with the audience, it becomes engaging, and the audience really, you know, because a lot of the songs, a lot of the music they've really never heard before, other than the, other than the standards, the classics, and mm -hmm. and the, which they just think of more as a you know as a as a, an older you know old familiar tune, but uh, it really engages the audience, and they buy into the music a little bit more. Oh, I've watched people come up to Nikki after a song and go. I just saw it. I felt it. I was there. Yeah. And it could have been the 151s, but I have watched people just compliment him all yeah. the time. About. We'll do a song called Longboard Legato, and I'll talk about the styling on a surfboard when there's only one fin in the water, and your rudder was really 15 feet of, of rail. And we'll start playing that song, and all of a sudden I'll see cell phones in the audience showing some longboard surfing. Ah. They're all holding them out there going, yeah, we get it, we get it. Oh, wow. It's, it's cool to connect that way. You know, I, I like that an analogy. Um, the, after World War II, that's when a lot of guys went off on, they either went off on motorcycles across the country, yeah. or they, they got surfboards. Sure. Yeah. It, it, it's almost like a spiritual, it is a spiritual it thing. Is. It is. For, really for a lot is. of people, it is. A lot of people get in, a lot of people get out. And there's, there's the hurdles of surfing. The first hurdle is the job. The second hurdle is the girlfriend or the wife. <laughs> <laughs> and the third hurdle's old age. Once uh -huh. you get through all of those, you're just a life surfer. There's, you're just in it for your, yeah. for everything. For the whole, it's such a cool vibe out there. Nobody fights. Nobody argues. Yeah. Just get in the water. Everybody knows you're there because you love it. And that's what the Hawaiians do a lot. When you're an old guy and you go to Hawaii, you're not fighting the locals. Mm -hmm. They go, oh, you're old. You want to surf? Come on, share our waves, bro. Come on. So, uh, what about surfing now? Is it how old is surfing as a as a would you wouldn't call it a sport? Would you? Well, it's ancient. It's yeah, ancient. it is ancient, isn't it? Yeah. I think some of the earliest ones I just was reading about are these guys over in Peru that used uh, reed canoes that were you didn't even sit on them, you sat on them, and then they they stand up and start riding them in the breaks. And they have uh, Captain Cook's got etchings that uh, some of the artists did on the boat of. Hawaiians in the surf it, it's been it's mm. just if you're in the water you're gonna you're gonna start bodyboarding you're gonna take anything that propels you with the waves and you're just gonna get into it because it's such an integral part of the lifestyle now it got really big in the 60s I guess right yeah that's when they it's started manufacturing it boards heyday, and, right. Uh -huh. right 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 also had media which drove it and it became the and then the music 
came along as and took it took it from there. Yeah, took it, just gave it gave it a voice, and it became a lifestyle actually. The music originated in pretty much Southern California, and surfing was huge then. And we'll all uh, say Dick Dale because he'll tell you right. himself he originated <laughs> surf music, but really it was the early '60s. And, um, now. The Beach Boys now, that's, that's not that's surf, surf music. Beach music. I didn't think that's so. Beach yeah. music. Yeah. It, it has a lifestyle. It, 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 it's got the whole thing, but it's, it's more a popular culture mm-hmm. thing. Surfing's always been a counterculture sport at its roots. Now, there's a bunch of different genres of surf music, but the one thing it has in common is, is that it's mostly instrumental. Is that correct? That's correct. Right. Yep. Yeah, that's correct. Maybe we don't like lead singers. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or that we can't sing. I mean, yeah. that be that. There is that. So what different? What kind of genres of uh, surf music are there? Well, they define them by waves. First wave, second wave, third wave, and fourth wave. First wave being the go original figure. bands. Excuse me. I said go figure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Go what an by analogy. Waves, sure. The the first the first wave being the early '60s. You know, uh, the, the Ventures, Dick Dale, mm-hmm. uh, Paul Johnson, the Bel Airs. Uh, all the way up to today's music, fourth waves are considered a lot of a lot of the punk bands from the '90s, which sort of had no place to go mm-hmm. when punk died, and they've been putting their stock and trade sort of into the surf, uh, the fourth wave of surf music. Mm-hmm. So, so what's uh, like? Uh, who are the latest surf bands uh, that you can think of? Well, there's uh, out of California. There's Frankie and the Pool Boys and the and the Tomorrow Men, uh, Low Straight Jackets. Although I'm not sure they would consider themselves a surf band, but the surf community has put them into the surf uh, uh, category. Mm-hmm. The Atlantics out of uh, out of um, um, uh, Australia. Australia. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hank Marvin in the Shadows has sort of been who's from England uh, and is still going strong over there. Still, you know, but he's had a big influence in the um, uh, influence in the surf through all the, through all the waves. Again, I don't think he would consider him a surf band, but the surf community has sort of put him in that category. So you guys, um, the, as far as like your instrumentation, uh, the guitars that you use, uh, mo- I don't really see any Gibson, uh, no Gibson, Gibson players in uh, oh, surf bands. You get bands. excommunicated for that. Is know, that right? So, so yeah. I, I no think Marshalls, I hit on that. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> no Marshalls and no, no Gibsons. No, no, no. I did not know that, really. Here's okay. kind of the reality, though. Even on our CD, we did break a lot of what would be considered the, the traditional rules of recording the music and it's, it's a lot to get into but some reviews that we've had so far have said it's got classic roots but a real modern sound and a lot of that came as a result of what we brought into the studio it wasn't 90 percent of it 85 percent of it was just our traditional instruments mm. but the 15 maybe even 20 percent that i think is the icing on the cake came from outside of our uh, standard gear mm. Then you guys, um, as guitar players, I think Including I made Including a mis- Les Paul. No, really? <laughs> Blasphemy. Yeah, right? <laughs> Please don't you excommunicate me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, man. That's right. Well, it was track six. Uh, can we play track six and uh, listen to that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not track six. So um, as far as like your guitar players go, I think I made the mistake of uh, saying, oh, there's a lead guitar player and a rhythm guitar player. I, I'm not correct about that, am I? We all just look at everything as one sound. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I'll default well, to Frank. I think he's well, no, a way I, I better think, player. No, no, but no. no. We, we each have a different style that we bring. We both play rhythm parts on certain songs. We both play the melody lines and or lead parts within those songs. But one of the things we did, and you'll hear it on the CD, that sort of broke the traditional uh, surf you know, format is we do a lot of um, dual leads. And harmonies, harmonies, and, har- and harmony up leads, parts. twin what, up parts. Which song is that? That, that you, can you think of off of this CD? Because I'd like okay, to listen to one. that. Yikes! Can, can I see the CD? CD? Sure, you, you go. Keep to, talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. I have to see what. Uh, and George will pick one up, and uh, let's let's listen to one of your songs all the way the Aloha, through. What the Aloha, say? the Aloha Stomp actually has three harmony parts on it. Uh, mm-hmm. Cutback has. Uh, Twin harmony parts at one point. Back on. All right, all right. Did he just start? <clears throat> Cut back. All right, let, all right. Let's listen to that for a while. What do you say? Let's let's just dig on some of cutback music right now.
beauty. Uh, you know, I was thinking, um, I had a question for you guys uh, with regards to, you know, when you write these songs. Um, <clears throat> do you come up with these songs while you're on the waves? Uh, you know, I, I mean, is that is that something that happens? Like you're, you're surfing and you're, you're generally just trying not wipe out when you're on the waves <laughs> oh, yeah. well that last song that we heard there it's uh, it's cut back and that's the name of your band but that's a surf uh, a maneuver is that correct that's right it's when you're on a wave and uh, a cutback is a maneuver when you redirect the wave will start to phase out say it's in between a sandbar or you're hitting the shoulder and you do a cutback you redirect your energy and get yourself back into the pocket of the newly forming wave uh-huh. and we kind of use that as our our theme song because that's essentially what we've done we've been surfing for all our lives playing music and we're we've kind of redirected our energy into this whole new surf band thing and Mm -hmm. and moving forward to that and just kind of try and ride with the flow you notice it starts out a little bit twangy that's kind of the old school stuff and frank goes into a lead you know very balls to the walls Mm -hmm. and and that's kind of the cutting back into the more modern way of approaching the, the wave the music everything and kind of what we do we just keep cutting back and do that whatever waves form and we're getting in there and we're gonna ride it cool I was just thinking there actually I can imagine which wave you're riding with your music you know I can you know I can feel it with the bigger and more crash kind of yeah wave. you know the music follows a wave right and there are different types of mu- of waves by the way uh, oh, sure sure there's diverse as, as the bottom that's coming in as the storm that produced the wave uh-huh. Uh, the wind that's acting on it and the tidal conditions of the spot. There's, there's all kinds of diversity. It's Every wave in the world is different. Oh. Except when you get into California at Malibu. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, they're all the same. That's why it's easy to be a good surfer in California. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? Uh-oh. No, it takes a lot <laughs> of skill because they get words. some size. <laughs> I'll still fall over. <laughs> no, yeah. they, they just had the uh, what they call the Pineapple Express over there out of... I saw that movie. Yeah, I have a, I have a nephew that's over <laughs> there, and he just uh, he was talking about surfing the big waves, and and down here when you have to get out to it, you have to go through it. There you've got channels and and uh, reefs that you can paddle around, and you don't actually have to go through the big stuff to get to it. Mm-hmm. But there were a couple closeouts that came across the horizon and just cleaned everybody out. Huh. A lot of power there. That's Pacific Ocean, two thirds of the Earth's planet. Wow. Yeah, I, so. I, I wouldn't have thought that uh, Florida would be a big uh, surfing place. I mean, I've lived down here since 1968, and, you know, I don't really see any big waves off of Fort Lauderdale Beach, but um, apparently that uh, you guys are saying that there's some big-time uh, legendary surfers that came from this area, right? Yep, that's right. We learn to read waves here because they're not consistent, and they come from all different places. So you, you're, you're much better at reading the water, reading the energy, and how the wave's going. And you guys go out and surf during like hurricanes and stuff like that? When it gets manageable. Yeah. When I was 18. When, we used to do that <laughs> when, when, we, were like, when we were a lot yeah. younger and mm-hmm. a, little more, a little more foolhardy. Right. It just depends on the conditions. We don't have to go out. We have the luxury now of kind of picking and choosing when we want to go out. So mm-hmm. if it's confused surf, we usually don't go out. We try to get it when it's a little bit more manageable. It's kind of like when you're when you're younger and you're surfing, you're going to go no matter what because it, you might yeah. miss it. You don't know if you're missing it. I got to get to it. I got to right. get to it. It's the surf fever. Uh-huh. And when you get older, you can kind of look at the waves and go, been there, done that. Yeah. I'm going to wait for the little warmer water, a little better swell direction. We can pick another day to get off work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. Skip work and go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, controversial question, I think, here. Do you guys consider kite surfers surfers or what? Uh, I mean, that looks like fun. Uh, if there were on. a kite surfing genre, our songs would be perfect for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're great. Well, we, we like to think we're a surf band, but we're really all about the water. It's, it's about being water people, being a water man, being a water woman. You could be a sailor. Mm-hmm. You could be a surfer. You could be a kite surfer. Wind that's surfer. Right. That's right. That's it's right. All, it's all about a kayaker. You just love. Yeah. You just love the water. It doesn't have to even be the beach. Be a lake, a river. Right. So, yeah. uh, long boards, short boards, long Ugh. and short. Yeah, long, really. A little bit of everything. I tend towards the long boards now. Yeah. It's a little more slidey. A little. A little more flexible. A little easier. Way easier. Your knees. Is it easier? You got to have good knees. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to be doing any aerials. That's all shortboard stuff. 
Oh, we used to skateboard, yeah. saved it for that, and that, that wrecked everybody's knees and ankles up pretty much. So You guys skateboarders too? Haven't done that in quite a while. <laughs> really? <laughs> Turns out the water's a lot smoother to land yeah. on than the road. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and it's hard oh. to walk into a client meeting with road rash down the side of your face. Oh. <laughs> Man, okay. Um, how about uh, fishing? You guys, uh, you're not in the fishing area. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. So yeah, it's it's that's part of it, especially growing up down here. So no, we're we are we are avid boaters and fishermen as well. See any sharks we're in there while you're surfing? All the time. Ooh, really? Last, last time Nikki and I were out, what? Five, six weeks ago, he's screaming, what, shark in the lineup? Just between yeah, Richard and I, we saw about, I saw about, it had to have been at least an 18-inch fin. And that's a, easily oh. attached to a six or eight-foot shark. Jeez. But generally, they're just moving on. They're just looking. Generally. They're just cruising they're, through. Generally, yeah. they're just moving on. Well, you know, you don't want to be in a bait pod. That's when the <laughs> bunch right. of fish are screwing around. You're on the lunch tray then. Mm. You don't want to do that. Just pull your hands and feet out of the water. Then a longboard comes in handy. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, you can balance on boat. your navel on a longboard. <laughs> now, weren't the uh, the original surfboards, or you know, the earlier ones, were all longboards, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah that's right. And With balsa, like one um, fin in the back. Yeah, that's one right. Big skeg. Yeah, mm-hmm. and huge and that's, heavy. Right. Surfing's always evolving, and it's just it's evolved and mm-hmm. just moved on through that. Now with the I think shortboards came in, and then the price of oil went way up, and longboards got super expensive, and they were kind of out of style, but I guess it was Simon Anderson invented the, the tri-fin thruster. And when you combine a tri-fin on a longboard, all of a sudden, you've got a lot more maneuverability. Where the traditional longboards, you had to you had to move around on the board a lot to find the sweet spot. Mm. But when you got those tri-fins, you can drop in on a cracking wave because you've got that one fin holding you up in the top. Where before, you might have to side slip down the wave. Hmm. So it's, it's a more aggressive approach to it. But then now it's traditional longboarding style. New, new school longboarding, fun shapes, short boards, winger, pinger, stinger. Now they got five fins. No cursing on the radio. It's, it's going all <laughs> over the place. Excuse me. <laughs> it's, it's an evolving thing, and that, that's a cool thing about it. Yeah. So um, you guys have, uh, so you have longboards and the shorter ones and all that stuff, huh? Oh, yeah. I got, I got seven <laughs> surfboards, and I keep getting given more by friends of mine that stop surfing. Wow. Yeah, right? That's uh. great. So um, your next gig is uh, second. Looking forward January to that. Second. January second. Yeah. My time. Do you mm-hmm. have any uh, like a like a grand opening for your CD here, or like a release party? Or? We did that last month. You did. And oh man, major show. We really did it up. What was it at the uh, My Kind? At the yeah, My they were Kind enough sure. to host it. Yep. Had a couple rum sponsors, which always makes things go good. Mm-hmm. I notice you guys have a pretty cool website. Uh, for your band, uh, what is the uh, where does somebody go if they want to check out your band? It's cutbacksurfband.com. Easy, yeah. Okay, so the whole band is it's not just cutback; it's cutback surf band. The name of the band's cutback. Okay. So well, we actually put in surf band at the end. We kind of fight amongst ourselves over this, just so it helps identify it. But there was another yeah. cutback.com taken, kind of so we had to uh, throw in surf band. Right, it made right. the domain availability. Yeah, so people wouldn't really know what uh, cutback is until, unless they were involved in surfing, right? Yeah, More pretty much. They budget cutbacks. Yeah, budget yeah, cutbacks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> budget cutbacks, yeah. We make headlines all the time. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so you could be a band of accountants. <laughs> Ooh, that's fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. Actually, we're a band of uh, artists, musicians, and mm-hmm. surfers. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, you designed this this um, this cut this uh, album cover, and the, on the inside here, uh, all that. It was just like a painting that you did, right? Yes, it is. That's great. You know, surfing is uh, one kind of a uh, lifestyle. You'll find more musicians and more artists than any other sport. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just. Shake a stick, you got an artist up in Cocoa Beach that surfs. A lot of girls surfing these days, too, huh? Some really it's a good, good thing to see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're really getting That's into right. stand up paddle boarding as well. It's one of the fastest growing segments is uh, are females on SUPs. Yeah, I've seen that. That's, That's an extension of our of our sport. Yeah, and a lot, a lot of the older guys, waves. too, are moving into the stand up paddle boarding to get into the waves. It, it, you don't have to spring up anymore, so you, you, you go into the waves standing up, so 
your knees survive a lot easier. It's kind of like when uh, they tell the old skiers, you got to start snowboarding because we need your knees locked to the same board, the same platform. Hmm. Well, in surfing, the, the guys whose knees are just blown out and can't do it anymore, well, they're not going to stop. So they right. get the they get the, the stand up paddle boards out there and that looks a lot harder. I mean, it it looks easy, but you know I've seen some really awkward guys up there, and uh, it doesn't look very easy to do. Is well, it? Uh, it just gets a lot of people out in the water, and that doesn't mean you know what you're doing when you get out in the water. Nowadays, there's a lot of people that need to learn the hierarchy, the mm. the kind of unspoken rules and don't drop in on anybody it could be dangerous mm-hmm. you know this guy's got the wave if you're paddling out go here mm-hmm. so it gets a lot of people in the water that without the proper kind of uh training right. understanding of common courtesy and safety in the water yeah that's one thing is that uh, surf etiquette there's like a big yeah. etiquette sure. thing there well only only after the age of 30 okay <laughs> yeah you guys prepared to play another song for us? Sure. We All are. right, cool. Let's listen to another song by Cutback. Which one? This is The Liquidator. It's our only, it's the only song on the CD that's not an original. It's a 1964 or 65 tune from by Lalo Schifrin, who's a Brazilian, but it was for an English movie of the same title called The Liquidator. Oh, awesome. So that's... Again, one of the ones Richard brought to the table. One originally, of the tunes. <laughs> originally <laughs> sung by Shirley, Shirley Bassey. Bassey. Who did Goldfinger. Uh, ah, Goldfinger. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's <laughs> listen. <laughs> Beautiful, eh? Yeah. Did you like that, Caroline? Yeah, I love it, actually. It's really good. I, and I can separate the three parts. Yeah. I can actually separate the three parts, and it's yeah. amazing, and then you harmonize them yeah. so well. It's very great. It's cool. So you guys um, used to, you played at the uh, boat parade for Christmas uh, one year, right? 2010. <laughs> yes. We, 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 got, we won Best in Sound for Private Vessel. Hmm. That's because yeah. Richard hooked us up big time with sound. Oh yeah. Oh, we were the. Well, you got to do music. music. We were loud. To do it too. I was going to say the music. Pr- you know, it's not just the speaker. But now, <laughs> I can honestly brag: we played to over a million people. 
<laughs> and that's, and that's one day that mo- most bands can. Yeah, you played some <laughs> Christmas tunes too, I guess. Remember? And yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah oh. we did. And, and in fact, we we played. It was a medley, and we played them. Do you remember? How, and that's all we played because if you think about it, every few hundred yards you're in front of a new audience. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> we played it. How many Three times? Hour? Oh, well, well, it was we for the length of the boat yeah, parade, like, but I think we played it like 32 <laughs> times in a row. So you talk uh, about, uh, fortunately, uh, the people that were on the boat with us, and we explained to them, you're, right. you're not hearing anything but this, because it was kind of part of the yeah. the atmosphere of the boat. People heard an old Ventures uh-huh. tune converted. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, and line, and then we did uh, the Snoopy's tune, Linus and Lucy. So uh, and and those was, were the same three we just did over and over and yeah. over for... Yeah. How many hours <laughs> the parade went on? Yeah, well, it was uh, Kate and Gypsy's yacht that we. Uh, oh, really? Uh, oh, cool. We on. Oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. We're gonna say hi to Kate. Hey, Kate. Hey, Hope Kate. you're watching. <laughs> hi, Kate. <laughs> Thanks for uh, bringing us together on this show here. We dedicate it to you today, okay? And of course, Char. Char's over there, my good friend. That's she's. Uh, right. She helps me with uh, my whole show and my company, and she's Kate's good friend as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. Um, yeah, so uh, this is my holiday special show, uh, last show of the year. Glad to have you guys here, you know, with me to celebrate. Uh, it's really good to, you know, promote your CD here. Um, you said that uh, you might have one more song that you could play that was uh, sort of a Christmassy kind of song, maybe. What do you think? <laughs> Absolutely. Actually, sure. Richard, Richard brought it to the table. Ted, bring it. Oh man. Uh, let's hear. What, what's yeah. which one is this one that you want guys want to play? Well, just recently, I heard that this year is the 50th anniversary uh. of the Charlie Brown Christmas. Yeah. And Vince Guaraldi and the tune Linus and Lucy, mm-hmm. which was a, a jazz tune that was never meant to be a Christmas. To, really has now become this like iconic uh, yeah absolutely and so um we we just pulled it out of the archives a couple nights ago and, um, good and if you go on s- different surf blogs it has been sort of one of these adopted instrumental tunes that you'll find a variety of surf bands play especially around the holiday time it's just sort of so it's it's kind of found its way into the surf community believe it or not perfect well i'll tell you what why don't we wind up the show with that beautiful song here and i'll I'll come back after that and uh, we'll say goodbye to everybody and happy new year and all that so let's listen to what's the song called it's 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 called linus and lucy linus and lucy instrumental version all right
Ladies and gentlemen, that was Frank Ferraro, Rich Lavoie, Nikki Ravine, and Cutback. And uh, we'll end my lovely Irish last <laughs> Colleen, Car- Caroline. We'd like to say uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry yeah, Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Happy, Happy Hanukkah. Yep. Crazy Another kind Kwanzaa. of deal. <laughs> Happy holidays. Festive say, Festivus. Festivus. And say something in Gaelic again, honey. Another kind of deal. Ah, uh, wasn't that beautiful? Uh, that is beautiful. <laughs> I don't know, but it sounded great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. Thanks for being on the show, guys, man. All right. Thanks Thank you for having us. Having us. Thanks. Uh, it's been fun. Right. That's it for Rick Show on Radio. See you next year. Awesome. On SoFloRadio.com. On SoFloRadio.com. Thank you, George. You're listening to SoFloRadio.com.